so good morning uh, welcome to my next class in the previous class uh, the next class of uh, the summer of the beautiful white horse we had already started this chapter in the previous class we had uh, i had already explained i read the text between lines and then explain i feel that you have understood and uh, i will try to explain it the next part uh, in this class so let us start that uh, in the previous class we completed that uh, here up to this that our narrator aram and his uh, cousin bazar murad they were riding the horse and uh, they were enjoying the scenario because i told that they had a strong desire of riding the horse and this desire had come true so they were enjoying a lot and uh, murad uh, actually started to sing song and our narrator told that it was not song it was as if he was roaring up to this we completed in that in in that a previous class so let's start up to these i hope the textbook is with you every family has a crazy streak in it somewhere and my cousin murad was considered the natural descendant of the crazy streak in our tribe our narrator is telling that every family has a crazy streak a streak means a person narrator is telling that as if every family is having such a you know crazy person and murad is somewhere the natural descendant descendant means the next generation of uh, of the crazy streak in their tribe streak means that person means murad is considered as one of the crazy you know somehow whimsical mad person in their in their gargolian tribe before him was our uncle kasro an enormous man with a powerful head of black hair and the largest mustache in san jacuen valley a man so furious in temper so irritable so impatient that he stopped anyone from talking by roaring it's no harm pay no attention to it our narrator here is uh, now giving uh, the description of uncle kasro here our narrator is telling that uncle kasro one of a person one of the person in their uh, you know gargolian tribe that he was a crazy person and he has having some uh, characteristics what characteristics that physically that he was a powerful man is a enormous man with a powerful head of black hair yeah powerful means large head a black hair and large mustache probably the largest mustache in san jacuen valley san jacuen what not is there on one of the long interior valleys of california i told that at present they were living in california and usa and the man this is a physical structure now the behavioral characteristics that a man so furious in temper so furious become very furious become very angry so irritable you know it's very tough to tolerate this kind of person so impatient this person is doesn't have patience much and anyone and every time whenever whoever comes to talk to him to uncle kasrob actually uncle kasrob stop that person by saying that it's no it is no harm pay no attention to it question may comes about uncle kasrob sometimes question comes to describe uncle kasrob we will have to write all these you know characteristics of uncle kasrob that was all no matter what anybody happened to be talking about once it was his own son arak running eight blocks to the barber's shop where his father was having his mustache trimmed to tell him their house was on fire our narrator is telling our narrator is giving a one day's account one day's story that once uncle kasro has gone to a barber's shop for trimming his the, you know the uh, the mustache uh, the longest mustaches and uh, when the barber was trimming his mustaches his son arok had came running eight blocks to the barber's shop and uh, the son went to his father to give the news that their house was on fire their house was caught fire this man kasrop sat up in the chair and roared it is no harm pay no attention to it can you imagine what kind of crazy person this kasro was his son arok has come and told him that father uh, our house was caught fire and listening this uh, that kasro was telling it's no harm pay no attention to it uh, the barber said but the boy says your house is on fire so the kasro wrote enough it's no harm i say 
even the Berber was very much agitated. The Berber was very much surprised. What the man was telling that his son has told him that their house was caught fire and the man is telling that there is no harm. None pay no attention to it. So the Berber also tried to you know make him conscious about that what you are telling your house was on fire. But the man told oh I told Kasrop told enough it's no harm I told this kind of crazy person um, Uncle Castro was in our uh, narrator's you know family and our narrator is telling that Murad was one such crazy man my cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of this man although Murad's father was Zurab who was practical and nothing else narrator is telling that Murad was considered to be the natural descendant of Uncle Castro, but Murad was a crazy person. But Murad's father, Zurab, was a very practical person. Practical person means who always takes decision standing on this reality. That's how it was in our tribe. A man could be the father of his own son's flesh, but that did not mean that he was also the father of his spirit. So, a narrator is telling, yes, there is a similarity between father and son. So, a man, um, maybe a man doesn't have, or a man does have his similarity with his flesh, with the physically he does have a resemblance, but in spirit, in attitude, in mood, it doesn't mean uh, there is, there is uh, almost no similarities uh, in between uh, in the attitude of father and son the distribution of the various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the beginning capricious and vagrant. Our narrator is telling that here the distribution uh, of the narrator's uh, tribe it become very pungent. Okay, uh, from a crazy person, very strong person, very practical minded person, all the people are there in their tribe. We wrote and my cousin Murad sang. Now our narrator again came uh, to describe the, that situation that they, they wrote and, and cousin Murad was singing the song. For all anybody knew, we were still in the old country where at least according to some of our neighbors, we belonged. Our narrator is telling that they were still living in that country, in that uh, in California, in San Joaquin Valley, in Olive Avenue. So they they all know they were living there. We let the horse run as long as it felt like running. So they were just riding the horse as if and the horse was running according to his own wish. At last, my cousin Murad said, "Get down! I want to ride alone." Now, after riding for a moment, now Murad uh, told our narrator that. To, to get down from the horse's back because he wanted to ride alone. Will you let me ride alone? I asked. Now our narrator told to Murad, okay, I'm, I'm you know, getting down from the, uh, you know, from the horse's back, but then will you allow me to ride alone? That is up to the horse, my cousin said, get down. And uh, Murad told, okay, that, that depends on the horse. It means if the horse wants to take you alone, then he will go. The horse will let me ride, I said. Our narrator told that yes, the horse will allow me to ride alone. We shall see, he said. Don't forget that I have a way with a horse. Here, I have a way with a horse means Murad is telling that he has a great understanding with the horse. Well, I said, anyway, you have a way to, with a horse? I have also. Our narrator is telling yes. If you have a way with the horse means if, you're, if you are having understanding with the horse, then I am also having understanding with the horse. For the sake of, of your safety, he said, let us hope so get down. Murad told our narrator, okay, let us hope that you are also having understanding with the horse. So now, get down. All right, I said, but remember, you have got to let me try to ride alone. But our narrator, before he was actually getting down from the horse's back, our narrator is telling to Murad that, don't forget that you have already promised me that you will allow me to ride, the, ride on the horse alone. I got down and my cousin Murad kicked his heels into the horse and shouted, Vizier, run. Yeah, Vizier means uh, expression. And uh, after our narrator had got down from the horse's back, uh, uh, Murad actually rode the horse alone. And he kicked his, so uh, kicked with the back of his heel and shouted. As you can see the picture, I feel that if this is the picture. That why where Murad kicked uh, using his heel and just he just uh, in order to run. The horse stood on its hind legs. Hind means back legs. The horse stood on his hind legs. This is the this is the hind legs that you can see. Snorted 
means neighed in EIGH, the cry of horse, and burst into a fury of speed that was the loveliest thing I had ever seen. Why our narrator told this is the loveliest when the horse started to run? Because our narrator knew that how much Murad wanted to ride the horse. And this is the scenario where Murad's, you know, desire of riding the horse came true. And our narrator loved Murad very much, being his uh, cousin. So this was the, uh, you know, loveliest scene. My cousin Murad raced the horse across a field of dry grass to an irrigation ditch, crossed the ditch on the horse and five minutes later returned, dripping wet. So our narrator was standing and he could, show, he, he could see that the horse was running and running and the horse uh, ran uh, along the field and it crossed a ditch and uh, within five minutes the horse came in front of our narrator and water was coming down, water was dipping from its body because it has crossed the ditch. The sun was coming up. Now it's getting morning. Actually, it has already. It was already morning, but uh, now the light is getting more brighter. Now it's my turn to ride. I said. Now Murad has uh, rode the horse alone. Now on at a told, this is his turn. My cousin Murad got off the horse. So Murad got down. Right, he said, Murad told, okay, right, you ride on the horse alone. I leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most awful fear imaginable. The horse did not move. Now, our narrator had a strong desire for riding the horse, we know, but now he rode the horse and now he, it becomes very much awful, imaginable. He became very much scared because after riding the, riding the horse, he did not know how to control it. Kick into his muscles. My cousin Murad said, Murad told, okay, kick into the muscles as he, as he did himself. So he instructed our narrator, kick into our muscles. What are you waiting for? You have got to take him back before everybody in the world is up and about. Now uh, Murad told our narrator that uh, you don't waste your time because we will have to go back before it becomes bright morning and it will become uh, everybody is waking up because it would be a great disaster if everybody comes to see them with the horse because then everybody will suspect that where from they got the horse because uh, the people around there they knew their economic status. So uh, Murad was, uh, was in a hurry. I kicked into the muscles of the horse. Once again it reared and snorted just like the same when Murad did. Our narrator also kicked its muscles. Uh, it, it reared, it just came back, it just stood on the hind legs, back legs and snorted. Then it began to run. I didn't know what to do, I told. The narrator did not know. This is the first time he was riding the horse alone. So I did not know what to do. Instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch, the horse ran down the road to the vineyard of Dikran Halabian where it began to leap over vines. Now, when Arom was riding the horse, sorry, when Murad was riding the horse, the horse was actually, the horse crossed the field, the horse crossed the canal and came there. But when our narrator was riding the horse alone, the horse did not go in that, you know, exact path. Rather, the horse entered into the vineyard, vineyard of a farmer, a farmer's name is Dick Ran Halabian, and begin to leap over the vines, begin to jump over the vines. The horse leaped over seven vines before I fell. And after leaping seven vines, our narrator had fallen from the horse's back. Then it continued running. And the horse, after our narrator had fallen from its back, the horse ran, the, the horse galloped, ran very quickly from there. My cousin Murad came running down the road and Murad was coming very quickly near to our narrator. I am not worried about you, he shouted. We have got to get the horse. You go this way and I will go this, you, you go this way and I will go this way. If you come upon him, be kind. Be kindly, I will be near. Now uh, Murad came to our narrator, his cousin uh, came running to our narrator and after coming he told that he was not worried that how much he was uh, hurted after uh, being uh, fallen down from the horse's back. Uh, rather he was worried to find the horse because Murad was very much concerned that uh, uh, he will have to find the horse before it becomes a bright morning. Uh, so uh, Murad told our narrator that you go this way, I am going that way. And 
child and also instructed or narrated that if you come across the horse if you can see the horse then be kindly with the horse because our narrator told our narr Murad thought that uh, our narrator might be very angry with the horse as he had fallen uh, from its back now <clears throat> I continued down the road and my cousin Murad went across the field towards the irrigation ditch. So uh, two cousin brothers, they went uh, in two directions in search of the horse which, has, which had ran from there. Now it took him half an hour to find the horse and bring him back. So in half an hour Murad came after finding the horse. All right, he said, jump on, the whole world is awake now. But no, what Murad was uh, very much frightened about that what he would do if uh, it becomes bright morning and the people will woke up then what would do and exactly this thing happened so Murad was telling that now what we will do because uh, the world is uh, woke, awake now the world is awake now it's become bright morning what will you do I, uh, I said now our narrator asks this to Murad yes what we will do well he said we will either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning so Murad told we are having two options one we will have to take the horse back with us to our home or we will hide the horse till tomorrow morning he didn't sound worried and I knew he would hide him and not take him back not for a while at any rate our narrator was sure that Murad would not take the horse back to home and Murad would hide the horse at any rate our narrator was sealed now from there we can understand that hiding a horse uh, abruptly in within few moments it would be very tough so it means that this is not the first morning that Murad is riding the horse and hiding the horse from this we can understand we can confer that uh, probably Murad had already made his routine of riding the horse whatever he didn't sound worried and uh, though he told that uh, what we do what we will do but uh, he was not worried at all where will we hide him I said John Atter asked Murad where we will hide I know a place he said Murad told yes I know a place how long ago did you steal this horse I said again our narrator asked this question to Murad how long ago did you steal this horse how long ago it suddenly dawned on me that he had been taking these early morning rides for some time and had come for me this morning only because he knew how much I longed to ride. Now our narrator, as I, as I have already told you, the narrator, this also come to our narrator's mind that this is not the first morning Murad is riding the horse because if it is the first morning then Murad must be worried that where to keep the horse, where to ride the, hide the horse. But he was not worried at all. At this, uh, our narrator told that uh, our narrator asked him that how long have you stolen the horse because he was not worried at all and our narrator actually realized that this is uh, actually Murad had been riding this horse in these few mornings for last few days uh, probably how many days our narrator also did not know and this was the morning that on which uh, uh, Murad had come to invite him for riding the horse who said anything about stealing a horse he said now Murad when our narrator uh, actually asked this question that how long ago did you steal the horse so this was Murad's answer who said anything about stealing a horse Murad is saying who has told you that I have stolen the horse anyway I said how long ago did you begin riding every morning our narrator asked that how long ago did you started this uh, riding this horse not until this morning he said Murad being very calm and composed he told no not until this morning this is the first morning we are riding the horse are you telling the truth I said uh, Natter asked him are you telling the truth of course not he said but if we are found out that's what we are to say and now Murad the first time Murad told our Natter no 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 I am not telling them uh, so confidently he is telling no 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 I am not telling the truth but if we are found with the horse then this should be our answer because uh, because I don't want both of us to be liars because if they give different answers then both of them will be liars uh, Murad did not want that both of them will be liars so this should be their stock answer if they were caught with the horse then this should be their answer that this is the first morning they have been riding the horse or they were they were riding the horse 
all you know is that we started riding this morning and murad told this is the this is the first morning that we had started to ride this morning only all right i said he walked the horse quietly to the burn of a deserted vineyard which at once at one time had been the pride of a farmer named fit virgin so murad had taken to the vineyard it was a deserted vineyard deserted means not in use and it was once a pride of a farmer his name was fit virgin here murad had taken the horse there were some oats and dry alfa alfa in the burn remember uh, the, uh, this line that where they were hiding the horse there were oats and alfa alfa tree we begin walking home then after riding the horse both of them went home it wasn't easy he said to get the horse to behave so nicely so when you were returning home murad uh, now started to tell to our narrator that it was not easy to control the horse to make him behave properly at first it wanted to run wild but as i have told you i have a way with the horse so murad actually now accepted yes this is not the first morning he is riding he had taken the horse much before and he has actually um, you know trained the horse at first murad told at first the horse wanted to run very wildly but uh, again murad told that i told you that i have a way with the horse i have an understanding with the horse i can get it to want to do anything i want it to do this is a good line i can get it to want to do anything i want it to do now murad has become very much confident about the horse he is telling that what i want to do with the horse the horse will do the same horses understand me and he is told that he is having a great understanding with the horse how do you do it i said now nature asked him how do you do it i have an understanding with the horse he said he told yes as i told you yes but what sort of an understanding i said our narrator is asking actually our narrator is very eager to know that how murad was able to control the horse a simple and honest one he said yes a simple and honest understanding i am having murad was telling well i said i wish i knew how to reach an understanding like that with a horse our narrator is telling okay i wish that as you were telling you are having a good understanding with the horse and i wish that i will also have a good understanding or in few days i will i will learn this understanding with the horse he was still a small boy he said when you get to be 13 you will know how to do it so from this line we come to know the age of murad as well we know in the very first line of this text we come to know the age about our narrator he was 9 years old and in this line murad told our narrator when our narrator told it okay in few days he also will learn how to make this understanding with the horse at this um, murad told that okay uh, when you will be 13 you will know how to make this understanding with the horse I went home and ate a hearty breakfast. So after riding this horse, our narrator is telling that he went home and uh, ate an a hearty breakfast. A breakfast was not hearty actually. Hearty means with a pleased heart, with a very satisfied heart. The breakfast actually seemed very tasty to him because uh, he had a very pleasant experience that morning. Up to this, in this class, I feel that you have understood the explanation. In my next class. we will continue or we resume for uh, the remaining part i will read and explain till then goodbye